I try not to sing any words in the interview. <laughs> I will use my speaking voice only. Where is Thompson when I need him? Okay. You ready, Al? I am rolling. All right. This is episode 14, Radio Cosmo Live, interview without Mike Thompson. And would you mark us in? Satellite online. Transmitting from the third mall from the sun. You have tuned into Radio Cosmos. Calliope Pettis, and she is a local performer, and she's uh, kind of graciously uh, allowed herself to be used and abused here at Studio A12 uh, for the Radio Cosmo Live, and uh, Calvin and I are going through this without our normal host, so we'll mm -hmm. see what happens. I, I really don't know how this is going to work well, out. Well, but... this is Radio Cosmos Live. With Calliope Pettis. So let's start. Let's find out who I she is. I thought we already had. Let's find out who she is. Who are you? All right. I am a human. I've been on this planet for a little over a quarter of a century. Uh, grew up here doing a lot of theater at Kaleidoscope. And then I went off to school to study opera because I was going to make serious music. Mm -hmm. And then I took a trip to New Orleans and I realized that music was meant to be shared. And mm -hmm. the kinds of music people make whenever they're just fiddling around and, and quite literally playing and exploring and experimenting and not worrying about what's right or wrong seemed really exciting to me. So I started writing songs after that experience. Um, deviating from the script. Deviating from the script seems to be your modus operandi because after having done a sound check with you, I realized this is somebody who's going to make some music later on in the show with kitchen implements. Yes, but what is music? It's just sound, really. Mm -hmm. Okay. But anyway, interesting and different. Well, to say the least, this is going to be an interesting episode. Um, Callie, we're going to refer to you as Callie. Uh, fair enough. I feel uh, like I'm in Callie Panama City. Callie is, <laughs> um, is fun. She's musical. And what we've already heard from the, just the sound check is going to be pretty phenomenal. Folks are in for a real treat today. But let's find out who who you are. Now you you were raised in in the Bay County area. Correct. Were you born here? I was born and raised here. Born and raised. Born and raised here. And um, actually, um, Hercules, what he was involved in what company here locally? Uh, Van Horn Mayflower. Van Horn. Okay, mm -hmm. and I, I know him, but I I thought that's who he who he was. I and, suspect uh, I suspect almost. Half the people in Bay County knows, knows your father, knows. so that's just uh, doesn't surprise me in the least. It's the way it goes. We're all really petite and energetic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> my wife, in fact, was was I think one of his bankers. He he she helped him bank, uh, do his banking and all that. At the, For the company or? Well, he she worked with uh, the local SunTrust Bank, commercial bank, and those commercial days. bank yeah. in those back in the early days. And uh, I've met him at several functions. I've been. She's introduced my wife has introduced me to your dad many times. So uh, apparently they had a, a working relationship through the the banking industry here in Bay, in Bay County. But um, have you ever collided musically with uh, with your group and the the singing my my father's done around town? No, have not. But uh, he's he's also musical, right? He is. Very musical. He's yeah. very musical. His mother, um, Mayaya, was very, very musical. Right. Um, there's a reference to her in one of the songs we'll be doing today, but she was very much, very much the classical musician. Ooh. And um, and I, I've heard very delightful stories of him biting the piano keys because he didn't want to practice the classical stuff. And <laughs> um, it's, it's delightful to. But, but so, 
your uh, Yaya was your inspiration to get into this music? Not this music. I, I don't know what she's, what she's, she's probably glad that I'm still making music in some regard. All of my older sisters were uh, pretty much forced to take Greek and piano lessons with her, and they were made to do band in school, whereas by the time I came along a decade later, I just got to go to the symphony orchestra concerts and the musical theater shows down at the Marina Civic Center and seeing my Aunt Stephanie play jazz. And so I was exposed to it and never required to take it so seriously. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I'm the one who is, who is continuing to pursue it. But now you were telling me uh, earlier that what you're doing now is you're in, uh, you went to college in, in Alabama. At Montevallo, yes. At Montevallo, and uh, but now what you're doing is you're traveling and to, around to the schools and sometimes, it. yes. As, tell, as, us, tell us what your musical a month musically looks like to you. Oh man, um, that is a challenge because there's all sorts of different things happening at different points in time, different grants popping up. I'm collaborating with different teachers all the time or different school board systems. Uh, the current project I'm working on is an art bus for uh, Jefferson County Schools up in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. And this colorful bus is traveling to the schools that do not have art or music. So when this bus gets to their school, they get on the bus and they do a visual art project uh, related to the subject, whatever it may be, for plants, for example. Um, and then in the background, my song will be playing and I also am, am responsible for making music videos for those songs. So I've been um, oh, wow. I've been practicing and experimenting my videography skills mm -hmm. as well. Um, and so that was really delightful. One of my private lesson students back in Alabama, I'm no longer teaching private lessons. Um, I lived in Alabama for eight years. The first four years I was studying diligently my, the classical music. I feel like Montevallo taught me how to be a musician. And then the next four years I lived in Alabama. I was there a total of eight. I was playing open mic nights and exploring and experimenting, and that really taught me how to be an artist. So recently, only recently, have I started to think of myself as an artist instead of a whimsical uh, weirdo. But I love working with kids because they help me stay connected to my inner child. And I feel like kids and the elderly and dogs have really got something figured out that we forget in the middle of our lives when we start taking things too seriously. Do you maintain the whimsical weirdo? Is that maintainable or is that you still doing any of that or just I would say so. I would say so. <laughs> You're having fun. Indeed. I think yeah. it's, it's no one's responsibility but my own to make sure I'm having a good time. Sure. And I just hope to inspire the people to do the same. Now what is a future near term and long term look like for uh, Calliope uh, Pettis? the near near future mm -hmm. uh, the next month i will be here i've been here for about a month with spending time with my family wrapping up those mm -hmm. art bus project music videos and this coming month i will be traveling to alabama to finish some of the filming for those music videos and then i'm preparing my vehicle to um to go camping for an undetermined amount of time to visit Yay! friends family national parks and decide where i might like to land next but i really feel like the southeast is is always going to be home and i know mm. i can always come back here but i need i've been such a people pleaser my whole life a straight a student good at that kind of thing so i need to get out <laughs> in the middle of nowhere and have no responsibilities for a little while so i can hear what my inner voice is saying because I've been afraid to listen for quite some time. Any ideas on exactly where this cross-country, maybe cross-planet trip is going to take you? <laughs> I mean, um, are, are we going to see um, social posts from you on, uh, you know, on the top of K2 or something like that where you've climbed up the second highest mountain in the world or any of that kind of stuff? or? <laughs> I sure hope so. Whenever, whenever I resurface, I'm really making an effort to just to get quiet um, and flip through old notebooks that I have and finish half-written songs. There's, there's quite a lot of them. Most of the time, I'm flipping through old notebooks. I don't know if you can identify, but it's mm -hmm. like bad poetry after bad poetry or bad poem after bad poem. And then, and then one line or one yeah. thing jumps off the page and the, the melody that I heard whenever I wrote it down comes back to me. I'm like, oh, that was that was a gift. I need to work really mm -hmm. hard to 
finish that. I want to revisit that. Exactly. Yeah. So, and of course, people in my, my catalog, they only hear the good songs. Yeah. The bad ones they'll never hear, you know, so. Well, I've heard some bad ones. <laughs> <laughs> so you say. <laughs> it's an experiment. It's an no, experiment. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Always an, uh, writing is, is always an experiment. Um, what motivates you to write? I mean, what, uh, what would a trigger be? Do you wake up in the morning saying, I'm writing a song today? Or uh, this, you just, I suspect you just hear a sound or a phrase and you can't <laughs> not do it. You know that I do, and I'm trying to resist the urge to just burst into song right now because I told you I was not going to sing in the interview. I was just going to use my speaking voice. But I really feel like the songs that are, that are gifts, they, they just come to me are like little bits and pieces of it. And I'm working really hard these days to, to be a servant to my craft and not a slave to my mind because in the creative process, judgment is the worst thing mm. because it keeps us from moving forward. And so whenever, what I really enjoyed about the Art Bus project is that I had learning standards I needed to incorporate. I needed to make it accessible for children. I tend to write very literally, which I'm trying to move away from as I experiment with different songwriting techniques. Mm. But the songs I wrote for the kids were great because I knew that the Miss Calliope thing I was doing was to serve a very specific community, whereas the songs you'll hear today were songs I wrote just because I wanted to. It's a way for me to fill myself up and to nurture my spirit so that I can overflow that and serve a community. What do you, self, what do you see yourself doing 20 years from now? I, the one thing I've never doubted about myself is that I'm a performer and I would love to be able to perform my original music full time. Um, I really enjoy edutainment. I feel, I, I go around in schools sometimes, not on a monthly basis, but mm -hmm. on occasion schools and libraries and I have a program uh, where I use music to teach some emotional intelligence things and that's a one-off one-hour course that I do mm -hmm. with kids and I'm coming to realize that you can't teach somebody unless you take the time to get to know them and so I really enjoy the opportunities um, through some state funded grants to go into the school for a full month and to collaborate with the teachers and get to know the kids and really immerse them and that's something I enjoyed about teaching private lessons for for four or five years because you got to know everybody on a very individual basis and you could trailer, ta tailor the, the training to exactly what their goals were. And that's, that's the tricky thing when you ask what 20 years from now is, is because there's, a, there's always a moving goalpost. But you have to be moving towards it, not thinking about it all the time. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, following the breadcrumbs, like we said earlier, little opportunities present themselves and you say, is this in line with what I think I want? Or... Okay. Um... Do you find this is a uh, strange, I should say, area for someone who performs uh, original music to subsist? I know that... In Panama some, City? Yeah, Panama mean? City. Uh, Panama City, Panama City Beach area. I, I know you probably, I don't, I would guess you probably have better luck in, in you know, over in the Fort Walton area or in Tallahassee area or mm. something with, where it's a little more accepted to do something other than uh, covers. Yes, I think... When you're telling a story or gaining the audience's trust in a sense, you kind of have to do those covers. If someone doesn't know who you are, then they're not going to be receptive to listening. But if you go in and you read a room well and you play songs that you think they like, when they're, once they're captivated, mm -hmm. you can play an original song for them. Um, and I've got, I suppose, I write children's music sometimes. Mm -hmm. and I have some hip-hop sounding songs and I have some singer-songwriter songs. So I feel pretty confident that if I... I'm in the right space and supported by the right people. Um, I could use my judgment to um, to give them something that I think they might be open mm -hmm. to hearing. Because mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, I think we all write because it's something we need to hear for ourselves. We create because we want to always, of course, be proud of what we've created. Um, we want to enjoy consuming what we have created. But we don't always know what somebody else needs, and so, I don't know, it's, it's almost a collaboration, whether someone's on, on the stage or in the audience. Um, I it should I be. The it should be. <laughs> it should be a connection. So, with that said, do you do covers? Only when I really want to. I did a, a summer of three, four-hour cover gigs, and it was 
I, I only did it for one summer, so. <laughs> you don't like that? Not necessarily. Doing it solo is a lot. The only reason I play instruments is so that I can accompany myself, really truly. I think the best instrumentalist can make their this instrument outside of their body, whatever it is, they can make it sing. Mm -hmm. And I have no desire to be that great at, an, at any one instrument. Um, I sang in a funk band for a while and I was just singing and that challenged me a lot vocally, mm -hmm. which I really liked. And I have some other friends who have R&B groups and things like that. So if all that to say is if I were being supported by other musicians who knew uh, the music, it would probably be less intimidating to mm -hmm. be the front woman of a cover band. And I might enjoy it a little bit more. What style of music, say you could just reach out and grab the uh, a band a good backing band for you to be a vocalist. What style music would you rather, oh. would you like to do? I mean, you... Uh... Well, I, I grew up listening to a lot of Beatles, James Taylor, mm -hmm. Joni Mitchell, Carly Simon, those, those kinds of things. Um, and that music is, it's pretty easy on your voice. So you could sing for five hours singing that kind of music, but then if you want to go and do like Janis Joplin or Tina Marie, like that's... Uh, that's very vocally hmm. demanding. And right. so, you know, you have one of those songs. I would, I would say if the ideal backing band would, would, um, would know how to craft the story or the set list in such a way that it's a little bit of everything. Um, but once again, that's not a desire that I necessarily, that's not a, something I aspire to right now, so I'm not giving too much energy to it. <laughs> Well, um, <clears throat> but I do like jazz, too. <laughs> As does Stephanie. Yes. <laughs> um, you can catch her this Friday. Yeah. Oaks by the Bay uh, Park. It won't, be, it won't be on, so. Ah, oh, alas. Yeah, this is... Dress. You cannot catch her this Friday. It'll be the past Friday. We're... <laughs> Isn't it so interesting? Yep. We're in the present right now, but it'll be the past when it airs. And Do you guys find that time does funny things? Mm. Of course. <laughs> of course. I tell you what, I'm excited about the music, and I think we should get her in there. Yeah, and let's, I think uh, we're... Let's hear some music. What do you think? I think that's an excellent idea. And uh, before we do that, you're going to play several instruments. What, what, how many instruments do you play? My philosophy um, is that two chords and a steady rhythm, and you can play any instrument. <laughs> There's a lot of truth in there. <laughs> we, could, we could get you into country music if you add one more chord. Add one. Add one. Wait, you know, country, if you go yeah. ahead to the, go to the five, well, you can do country music, okay? <laughs> uh, um, what music, what in, uh, two things. What instruments are we going to hear you play and why? And the other thing is, if people want more of your music, is there some place they can go and find you? I know I found some, some of your stuff on uh, uh, YouTube. Yes. I just put your name into YouTube and stuff Lots starts Lots of embarrassing to... experiments that I shared with everybody. I just, I was all out there. I didn't save the best for them. I was just like, blah. Just out put out it all out. Yes. There. Yeah. But CalliopePettis.com has links to all the social medias I use or don't use or may resurface on um, at some point in time on the top of a mountain. Well, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking forward to you playing kitchen tongs and, and a mandolin on top of a mountain somewhere yes. as a social media post. I mean, I, I'd actually watch that. Perfect. I would. Well, I'd buy a ticket. To you buy real. a ticket. Your I'd attention buy... is so valuable. Thank you. <laughs> So right. go to your website first. She didn't the answer website. my questions about she, she the didn't. about the yeah. instruments. About the instruments. Um, well, you have so a beautiful you, guitar out there. Tell us a, a, you gave it away. The tongs and the and the mandolin and the ukulele. You a be the you beautiful be guitar. You have a beautiful guitar. Tell us about your guitar. Uh, that guitar is my baby. It has a floating bridge, beautiful uh, hollow body arch top, Golden Fifth Avenue, and it's just a sweet sound. And a lot of songs have just poured out of that mm. that very guitar and it's got that floating bridge it's not going to like different humidity and different temperature shifts so i'm going to have to have five, have a friend babysit it and take good care of it while i'm gone um, mm. however the the mandolin actually i had guitar lessons and piano lessons as a kid but i never mm. wanted to practice because my teachers were too too regimented and anytime i would sit down to practice i'd get this feeling like oh, i'm gonna do it wrong <laughs> and so i just would play for five minutes and set it down. But when I started writing music, or having the courage to call myself a songwriter in um, the latter half of 2015, a friend, I was just singing acapella songs and 
mm-hmm. clapping and body percussion. Mm-hmm. But a friend gave me the mandolin and said, I think you would really like this. And because nobody had ever told me what was right or wrong, it helped unlock something mm-hmm. really special. So mm-hmm. the first, you know, 20 songs or so I wrote were on the mandolin and you'll just just hear, just hear the best one today. <laughs> All right. Yes. Well, let's head out to the other room. Uh, we'll be back with you in just a few minutes after we get her mic'd and wired back into the studio. And uh, the music will then commence here on Radio Cosmo Live. Do I get to clap again? No. <laughs> oh, hey, Cosmos. Sorry I didn't see you there. This is Martin from the Recovery Room on Radio Cosmos every Friday night on WKGC 90.7 FM. And you are watching me watching Radio Cosmos Live. Okay, are you ready, Calvin? We're rolling. Would you clap us in, ma'am? Oh, I would be delighted. Well done. Thank you. Well, we're back. We're back here in the main room, and uh, Calliope is going to uh, entertain us. Are we going to do the Kitchen Implement song first? We are. Wow, I love that song. I just, yeah. I, I like the yeah. whole idea of Kitchen Implements anyway, uh, in as a musical instrument. I, now, now, did you like go to TJ Maxx and go through all of their in- instruments, clapping them together to see which one had the right sound? Actually, I just bought this little bell kit from a pawn shop, mm-hmm. and then an old song, flipping through an old notebook where the you know the melody pops off the page, um, just appeared in my mind. And I was like, oh, I don't have a mallet for that. I was like, well, it's a song about cooking. So I just went into my kitchen and got these out and designated them the music tongs and that's, not the food tongs. <laughs> I, guess that's, I, I guess that's why music and musicians are such fun. Anyway. Take, take us away. All right. Bum, bum, ba, be, bum. Bum, ba, be, bum. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, ba, be, bum. Bum, ba, be, bum. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, ba, be, bum. Bum, ba, be, bum. This is my cooking song, don't tell me that I've got it wrong, cause I know the difference between pan seared and fried, dicing tomatoes and slicing lime tea. Making a stew out of you Between your heart and your mind I will mix it up this time Making a stew out of you Potato, potato, tomato, tomato 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 Tell me 
between pan seared and fried, dicing tomatoes and slicing lime to lie. Now with the day fried, so yeah, I know the difference in the high, low, the distance between your heart and your mind. I will mix it up this time, making a stew out of you. And I know we only just met at the farmer's market. But you got a shape I can't forget And I know we only just met in the produce aisle But I would like to take you home I'd like to spice you up And then I think I'd like to taste you after a while And the only luxury appliance I hold is a lemon squeezer And the only luxury And the only luxury appliance I own is a lemon squeezer. And the only luxury appliance I own is a lemon squeezer. And the only luxury appliance I own is a lemon squeezer. And the only luxury. That's amazing. What is that gadget? This gadget is a loop pedal and it's quite fascinating. Can be dangerous too because it repeats everything I say. It repeats everything I say. And then you can add it repeats oh, everything I say. This is actually one of my favorite tools to do. in the classroom to repeats. use because I think our internal dialogue is a lot like the loop pedal. And whew, some, some of us have, have had some unkind things said to us before, and then we start to believe them instead of believing and repeating the nice things people have said to us. So when someone tells you that you're uh, doing a good job, you should believe them. And if someone tells you otherwise, if they don't offer constructive criticism afterwards, then it's irrelevant. So can you, <laughs> can, so can you take over charge of politics in the United States? It sounds uh, like you're the one to do that. I don't know because I get off on too many philosophical rants, and <laughs> so um, I don't know. <laughs> okay. What's next? What you got next? Uh, next, we're just keep keep with the silly, lighthearted vibe. Of course, we've got to pick up the uh, ukulele. Ukulele. We're gonna get some of this loop pedal stuff out of the way first. Uh, I am, and I will take responsibility for myself. Ha ha ha! Maybe I should be a politician. <laughs> Obstructing the view of oh, I don't think so. Cameras. All right. That's good. Brilliant. Brilliant, I say. And what? And the name of this tune is? Uh, this one is "Love and Loss." Let's listen, listen to the shout out to my yaya in this one. <laughs> um. I didn't get a, a ukulele until after I graduated classical music school because I didn't think anybody could play a ukulele and take themselves seriously. And it's probably true. If I just talk to I got scared by the amount of hair in the sink. If as the kettle squealed impatiently, begging to know what I think. About love and loss at any cost My heart is warm and it's a crippling frost Biting at my mind I remind myself that I have never lost anything profound Except my sweet yo-yo who preferred her fine music to sample Oh, what's love and 
sure that's taking yourself very seriously on a ukulele, but uh, <laughs> pretty, pretty good, pretty good. Oh, so what, what you got next for us? Next, I've got a, uh, a mandolin song, and this, uh, the, the one you just heard is on an EP that I recorded in my home, and a great friend helped me mix it, master it. This is another song from that same EP. Um, yes, all about... This, this journey I'm going on is very reflective of this song. So cool. Joy, What's its name? Joyfully Alone. Joyfully Alone? Joyfully Alone. What do they say? Close enough for government work, right? Just weaving all kinds of politics into this today. Yikes. Truly, no, and without the good pet with evil in his life, how do you yourself? 
yourself expect to grow and if you live every day the same don't be surprised when you reap exactly what you sow oh find the joy in planting some of those seeds for yourself mm -hmm. what are you nurturing yeah beauty blooms when you tend to Self, mm, oh, 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 and what are you gardening anyway? Cause men made beauty and flower beds, they all eventually decay. I prefer wild things, birds that sing, but that are free, determined melody. We do fly free if that peace we learn to be. The self will surrise, glistening brighter than the sun. A loud words of wisdom to fall from his lips, and my ears are stung by the kind of mind of Calliope. Always alone, be it on your own or standing here talking. So just sit and talk to. Amazing. Thank you. I like I like the you're sticking little bits of scat in there too. You're obviously <laughs> I like very, jazz. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like jazz. Yes, you do. Uh, obviously, you're fond of that. And it's a little bit that I've heard of your music now. As you, if uh, if you're not going to play the note, you will indeed sing the note somehow. That's very nice. Thank you. All right. What uh, we have for us next? Oh, now now is the real treat. My beautiful, my beautiful Godin is going to sing a little bit. And, that, is uh, a, that is a very pretty guitar. I, I'm so thrilled that that it found that it chose me. Um, here's a song that uh, only only about a dozen folks have heard so far. So I'm excited to to share a brand spanking new one with you. Suitcase full, still more packing to do. You used to help me out.
Very pretty. Thank you. Nice range of music. We go from kitchen utensils to that. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. I am a human. You are a human. You've said that several <laughs> times. I, uh, can we get a DNA <laughs> test in here? <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> she protests too much on that one, so I think maybe a, a... No, I guess what I mean is there's just so many complicated thoughts and feelings, and I'm such an upbeat person. That uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be honest mm -hmm. to, um, you know, that inner voice. But I'm gonna stop talking now. Yes. You get you <laughs> What's next? We've got a, uh, I've got one more for you, um, and it is, it's, it's more, it's, it's more hopeful. Oh, we like hopeful. Yes. Okay. Um, it's, it's called therapy. If you have, if you ha have another one after this, we're probably gonna have time for two. Oh, two more after this. No, this one and one, one more. Ah, well then you know what? What? I will save. I will save therapy. Okay. For last. Is is that? Do you think that's something the staff here at the studio needs? Is that no, why you're doing that? No, absolutely not. Absolutely no, I I, not. I think our audio engineer in there is going. <laughs> yeah, the staff in this place really does need that. I think we all need it. Mm -hmm. We all need it. But this, see, that's what we're here to do. We're we're all sharing music therapy. And we're sharing community. We're Oh, heavens, three more, three more. All right, um, oh wow, this is, what an honor. Um, I'm gonna play this next one. Okay. If I had s stuck to this one, to the philosophy in this song here, then that last song probably wouldn't have gotten written. What is its name? This song is called Ubo. So Ubo is uh, the perfect lover. Not a girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, or wife. No, no, no. Not someone who wants to tie you down. But if you ask nicely and you're into that kind of thing, Ubo's going to tie you up. Ubo, that's my lover. Yeah, Ubo, that's my pal. Ubo, we're together, but just for now. Got the kind of love that don't suffocate me through the night. I ubo, whoa, whoa. I ubo, that's my ubo. So, like I said, ubo's not a girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, or wife, but you're gonna wanna take this ubo out and show this ubo off. But you and Ubo realize two things are inevitable. One, attraction to other human beings. And two, that evil green monster we know as jealousy. 
So if your Uber wants to dance with someone else or buy someone else a drink or have an ever-loving conversation with another human being, you're just gonna take a deep breath, let it out. Cause you know Ubo's going home with you. That night, when me and Ubo go dancing, yeah, you already know. It's that sweet, simple kind of romance that helps my love and grow. My Ubo has got a silk tie, yeah, and a silky vest. My Ubo has got the kind of love in that I like the best. Since Ubo's not a girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, or wife, luckily there's none of that breakup nonsense or any of that divorce paperwork or that time where you sit in a bathtub for 48 hours and eat 72 gallons of Ben and Jerry's ice cream while your body turns into a shrivelly prune. Because if you want another Ubo, that's just not the way to get out and find one. You see, you and Ubo realize that everything that begins must also come to an end. But sometimes, till death, will not do. So this is what an Ubo is really all about. Discovering myself, Ubo through and when you. An Ubo where our time is spent. Oh no, I will not be so blue. But smile at me kindly, Ubo, because you special part of me exists, Ubo, because, because I knew you, I Ubo, whoa, whoa, whoa. I Ubo, oh, that's my Ubo, whoa, 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 whoa. yeah, yeah. So if you're looking for something not so serious, just a little bit of fun, you're not looking for the one. Get up there and proclaim Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Oh, thank you kindly. What's next? All righty. Um, I well, got you all mic'd up. I want to get as yes, much out of you as I can. We've so. got we've got two more left. I'm looking around. I have this beautiful instrument in hand, and so I will just continue with it. Uh, would, um, should, should we have another one from the album, or should we have a children's song? Let's do a children's song. Okay. I mean, it, it speaks to the staff here, so... Okay, perfect. I'm, I'm, I'm good with a children's song. All righty. This is another pseudo-breakup song, but it's really about writing letters to reptiles. And since it's for the art bus, where we integrate learning standards into, into the music, we're, we're talking a lot about the magic E. You know what the magic E does, right? At the end of a end of a word, cap, cape, can, um, glide, glid, all those kinds of things. Reptile, reptil. It would be reptil without its E, right? I don't have to convince you. You know how to spell. This song helped me learn how to spell and address my letters properly. Hey, reptile, I haven't seen you in a while. Has it been months or weeks or days? Have you been hiding in your camouflage? What did you just move away? Did you change the spelling of the place you're dwelling? Can I contact you today? Reptil, reptil, I know that's not your name. You're a cold-blooded creature and I know you can't be. I 
perched on a leaf, you're green, and on a rock, you're gray. Without your E, your letters are lost in the mail. Did you not get the note I wrote to be? Without your magic E, without your E, you don't slide, you slid. We used to glide through the blade, but without your magic E, I haven't been glad since you glid away from me. swimming. I usually end up sitting on the side of the pool with my turtle friends talking about how home is where the heart is. And you see since a turtle wears his shell on his back, well his home's with him everywhere he goes. And I guess that would explain why I can never get a hold of him. His address is always changing. Hey you reptile, I haven't seen you in a while Has it been months or weeks or days? Have you been hiding in your camouflage? What did you just move away? Did you change the of the place you're dwelling Can I contact you today? Reptile, reptile I know that's not your name You're a cold-blooded creature And I know you can't be tamed Hey, reptile I really like your new style Perched on a leaf, you're green And on a rock, you're gray Without your E, your letters are lost in the mail Did you not get the note I wrote to be? Without your magic E Without your E I guess I'll never look at a snake the same way again, will I? <laughs> I hope not. That's the goal. Um, get curious every time you see a reptile. Ask a new question. Make it a friend. Ask him his address. Write him a letter. Stop letting me ramble. Where do you get an address for a reptile? Um, well, actually, there are several wildlife centers that receive mail for the reptiles <laughs> they keep. Okay, good. All right. We got one more, I hope. We have got one more. Um, I remember during the interview earlier, we went off, we went on a tangent, and I forgot to mention something. Uh, when I was teaching private lessons, one of my 17-year-old students was very interested in sound recording, and he helped me actually record all of the songs for, for the um, Jefferson County Art Bus. So just wanted to give a shout-out to Dakota McClurg. All the smart questions I was asking you about chords and cables and things earlier is because he taught me well. It's nice whenever you get to learn from your students. Anyway. That is actually excellent. And... I do a lot, learn a lot from my students. Indeed. Just the curiosity factor. 
I, uh, I'm wary of experts for that reason, because sometimes they lose curiosity, but you seem like you've maintained a lot of it. It's the students. They help you. Keep you young. There you go. <laughs> All right, here's therapy. This, uh, this first line is like one of the ones we were talking about earlier. Just jumped out of the notebook page, and I was like, all right, I guess I'll put the work in and finish it. Thank you very much. One more time. How do we find your music? Calliopepetis.com, C-A-L-L-I-O-P-E-P-E-T-T-I-S dot C-O-M. And there's links to all the things there. Okay. Thank you very much for being here. And that's, we're going to wrap up this episode of Radio Cosmo Live. Next week, our normal host will be back and I'll be back behind the camera again. I want to thank Calliope for coming in. I want to thank my uh, business partner and our sound engineer in there, Calvin, for putting up with me today. He says he gave me a thumbs up. <laughs> thank you so Michael much. Michael will be back next week. And that's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs>